What is the single most advanced fighter aircraft in the world? We'd hazard a guess that the American F-22 Raptor might come to mind, or maybe the F-35 Lightning, also American. If not one of those two, then perhaps you went for the Chengdu J-20, which entered service in China's Army Air Force in 2017, or the Su-57 Felon, the fighter jet that Russia somewhat dubiously claims to be on par with the others that we've just mentioned, but it's probably not. But we'd be reasonably certain that whichever individual aircraft you first thought of, it was probably a fifth generation fighter. The ultra stealthy, super maneuverable, incredibly fast, and unbelievably high tech class of aircraft that are on the cutting edge of today's battlefields or surveillance balloon shooting ranges, if we're talking about the American jets in particular. Regardless, three nations have so far cornered the market on fifth generation fighter aircraft the US, China, and Russia. Whether export deals put these jets into the arsenal of more countries or not, these three are the military-industrial top dogs, at least for now. Around the world, a number of other nations are working on their own super-advanced aircraft. Although none are far enough along in production yet that we could devote a whole video to them, there's some fascinating R&D going on in India, Turkey, Sweden, Japan, and elsewhere, all with the aim of meeting or even surpassing the fifth-gen fighters that have already made it to the sky. The first step in our world tour brings us to South Korea, where Korea Aerospace Industries has partnered with Indonesia to produce the KF-21 Borame, a highly advanced fighter jet. The Borame is currently in the test flight phase, with 120 on order for delivery to the South Korean Air Force by 2030. While the base version of the fighter uses external hardpoints to store its missiles as a feature that makes it impossible to fly as stealthily as a true fifth-gen fighter, future versions of the aircraft are expected to house those weapons in an internal or weapons bay, and in every other sense, the Borome is already meeting criteria as a fifth generation aircraft with capabilities that are believed to exceed the American F 35 in some areas, particularly their agility. Although South Korea holds an 80% share over the Borome, Indonesia is also party to the program, and both nations hope to turn their plane into a cash cow on the export market. Poland has already signaled its interest, and given the Russian Su 57's apparent inability to woo international buyers, the Borome stands a very good chance at moving into new market demand. The plane is cheaper than the F-35, and there's a fair chance that Thailand, the Philippines, and Iraq could all get in on the action soon. It will offer South Korea significantly enhanced self-defense capabilities against North Korea, whose rusting fleet of early Cold War fighter jets would be no match for such an advanced airplane. The program has been marked by notable controversies, including postponements, missed payments from Indonesia, and a bribery scandal, but as of now, the production team appears to have worked out the major kinks ahead of assembly line production. The Boromai seats either one or two crew members, with an overall length of about 17 meters and a wingspan of 11 meters. It has a maximum speed of Mach 1.81, which is 2,200 kilometers per hour or 1,400 miles per hour, with a range of 2,900 kilometers or 1,800 miles. The plane carries a cannon and 10 missile hard points capable of carrying air-to-air, air-to-ground, and potentially cruise missiles, as well as free-falling and precision bombs. And as of now, there's an aircraft carrier variant in the works. Some 5,000 kilometers away, the Indian Air Force and Navy are hard at work on their own fifth generation design, the Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft, or AMCA. Developed by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, the AMCA is currently in development with the program price tag of around $2 billion, with a somewhat more nebulous timeline on uh, when it will take to the skies. The AMCA is being developed with hardiness and survivability in mind, possibly in an attempt to do uh, more with fewer production line model, and it is a valuable step in updating India's aging air defense fleet. At present, AMCA is at a phase called Critical Design Review, a process that should determine whether it's actually feasible and worthwhile to produce a prototype. This review process could answer quite a few doubts around the AMCA, for better or for worse, given that at present it's not clear that India has the manufacturing and technical capability to produce the plane, and even if it can make a prototype, there's not currently a level of military industrial within India that would allow it to mass-produce the aircraft. 
Of course, we're not here to tell India how to order the steps of their aircraft production, and it's not unreasonable to assume that those capabilities will be developed after the critical design review phase indicates that it would be worthwhile to do so. The AMC-8 is designed for a maximum speed of 1600 miles per hour, that's 2600 kilometers per hour, with a range of 3200 kilometers or 2000 miles. That puts the plane at over twice the speed of sound, with a service ceiling that would rival most of the best jets in the world, and its length and wingspan dimensions mentions are similar to that of the Korean Borome. The AMCA is a single-seater craft with 14 hardpoints, some of which are nested inside an internal weapons bay as well as a 23mm cannon. It comes with all the necessary fixings of a fifth-gen aircraft, including a stealthy design and cutting-edge avionics. The plane is also built with the future in mind, and according to its engineers, it will be able to integrate new tools like smart wingman and drone swarm technology when they become available. Next up, we head to Sweden to explore the FlyG System 2020. That is, the Flight System 2020. There's actually not a ton that we can say about the FlyG System at present, though, because as of yet, the Swedish Air Force hasn't allowed much information out other than the fact that it exists. The fighter is in development by the Saab company, with the expectation that it will produce a Swedish fifth-gen fighter by 2035. And that's about all we know. Sweden has long been a leader in advanced fighter jet design, and its iconic Saab Gripen has become a major export around the world. So it's safe to say that the FlyG system's existence should at least be taken seriously. What we know a bit more about, though, is how Sweden's fifth-generation design has been interfacing with other fighter development programs around the world. Since the early 2010s, Saab have been marketing their services in developing futuristic fighter jets, with Turkey agreeing to accept their support toward its own aircraft. Now, we'll be talking about that Turkish plane in just a moment. However, Sweden now appears to me more closely aligned with the UK, Italy, and Japan in terms of its broader goals. Whether the FlyG system might end up being merged into some other design or remain its own thing, we'll just have to wait and see. It also might just have been quietly cancelled. But let's not rule out any cool clandestine programs until we have to. As for that Turkish program that the Swedes might or might not be currently involved in, that would be the Thai TFX, produced by Turkish Aerospace Industries, with an anticipated entry to service somewhere around 2029. The TFX is a homegrown design meant to replace Turkey's fleet of American-made F-16 fighter jets with the potential to produce enough for large-scale export. This decision was heavily influenced by the US decision not to sell Turkey its F-35 aircraft, although the TFX program was underway prior to that decision being made. Both the program itself and its timeline have been described as particularly ambitious, as it doesn't just require Turkey to produce a highly advanced aircraft, but also develop a lot of the necessary technical and production capabilities from scratch, given Turkey's inexperience in creating fighter jets in the first place. The program has received significant support from the UK, as well as its aforementioned work with Sweden, both of which have helped push up the development timeline substantially. Russia has also expressed interest in being a part of the program, although the current status of any collaboration is unknown. The TFX was initially slated to take its first flight in 2025, but according to the development team, they've been able to move their timeline up by an entire two years. As of now, the TFX prototype appears on track to fly before the end of this year, and given the latency period between writing and publishing these videos, it's not impossible that that flight could have already happened by the time you see this video. If Turkey has its way, the TFX will be delivered to the Air Force by 2030, with mass production taking place in the next several years. If that were to take place, the TFX would put Turkey alongside the most advanced air forces in the world, with serious implications for both NATO as well as a range of conflicts in the Middle East. There has been one persistent problem with the plane, though, at least right now, and that's its engines, which Britain's Rolls-Royce company has been on and off committed to helping to produce. This dispute has been a thorn in the side of TFX for years and when the prototype was publicly unveiled in 2022, it was still missing its engines, but as of now it does appear that Rolls-Royce and Turkey are on track to resolve their differences and move forward. In terms of its design specs, the TFX is significantly bigger and chunkier than other aircraft of its
its kind at 21 meters or 68 feet long with a wingspan of 14 meters or 45 feet. It's got a projected top speed of twice the speed of sound, albeit with a somewhat shorter range than the other designs that we've discussed today, around 1100 kilometers or 700 miles. The plane will be produced in both single and twin seater variants, and although the number of hard points is currently unknown, it is expected to be able to carry a full suite of missiles and bombs. And finally, we come to an aircraft that might seem a bit more familiar, the MiG-41. We've recently done a deep dive on the Su-57 Felon, the plane Russia claims to be fulfilling the role of a fifth-generation fighter, and we do recommend you check out that video because it should help to explain why we're not covering its purported successor plane, the Su-75 Checkmate, in today's video. Given the dubious viability of the Felon and Sukhoi's apparent inability to either produce significant numbers of the plane or market it to other countries, the Checkmate is at best a distraction from those failures and at worst destined to repeat them. But the situation is a lot more nebulous with the MiG-41, officially referred to as the PAC-DP. Initially ordered in the mid-2010s, the MiG-41 was planned as an advanced fifth-generation fighter known as a 5++ generation fighter. Planned for a role primarily as an interceptor, the MiG-41 would be a spiritual successor to the successful MiG-31 interceptor, which boasts some of the world's highest speeds for a combat aircraft. If it enters service as planned in 2028, the MiG-41 would use ramjet or turbo ramjet engines to exceed even the MiG-31's capabilities. The reason for this isn't purely for the sake of competition with the US and China, but actually to serve as an interceptor for hypersonic missiles, which have become a more and more real future threat to countries around the world. The MiG-41 is also expected to be able to fly at extremely high altitudes and even perform anti-satellite operations, including in the exceptionally bitter conditions above the Arctic and Siberia. Although most details of the MiG-41 are still under wraps, it's said to be in the development phase with the capability to fly at over four times the speed of sound while leveraging the full range of stealth technology expected of such an advanced aircraft. With all of that being said, it's also possible, or even probable, that the MiG-41's production might have been thrown off course due to the continued Russian war in Ukraine. International sanctions have stymied Russian military development across all spheres and frustrated attempts to get any level of assembly line production going on planes, ships, and tanks. Given the very lofty aspirations for the MiG-41's capabilities, it stands to reason that the design requires at least some international support to bring it into reality. And if that's the case, then Russia's status as an emerging pariah state will keep the MiG-41 on the shelf for some time. We're going to be a bit more brief in this last entry simply because this project is so new, but it absolutely deserves some major attention on its own. In December 2022, the United Kingdom, Japan, and Italy announced a long term partnership to build a coveted sixth generation aircraft. Not fifth, but sixth, an entire evolution ahead of the best warplanes currently in the sky. Named the Global Combat Air Program, or GCAP, this initiative intends to replace British Typhoons and Japanese F-2 fighters without the United States' help and aims to have an aircraft in the sky by 2035. A sixth-generation fighter aircraft is distinct from a fifth-generation fighter in a few key ways. In addition to all the factors that set a fifth-generation fighter apart from its predecessors, a sixth-generation aircraft is expected to integrate AI, cyber warfare capabilities, drone and swarming capabilities, directed energy weapons like lasers, and even more advanced stealth, avionics, and tools for pilots to understand a battlefield. These are advancements that could make even the best fifth-generation aircraft obsolete. The United States and China both have their own purported designs in development, with the US looking to put a fighter in the sky sometime around 2030. India and a coalition between France, Germany, and Spain are also in early stage planning for a sixth gen aircraft, although these countries lack some of the necessary capabilities to actually field such a high tech warplane. But the joint venture between Japan, the UK, and Italy is notable not just for the advanced nature of the tech that it hopes to produce, but for its potential to create a new powerhouse within geopolitical military aviation. 
Japan already had a sixth gen design in the works, the Mitsubishi FX or F3, and the UK and Italy were already working jointly on a similar system called the Tempest with help from BAE. An effective fusion between the development and production capabilities of these nations could add a whole other dimension to the future of aerial warfare, and one that doesn't grant the United States unilateral control over the fighter capabilities of its closest allies. The US doesn't seem too worried, though, given that it's fully endorsed the GCAP program, but the implications of such a global shakeup still remain to be seen. For several decades, the international order in the skies has been centered around the use of just a few fighter aircraft. The American F-16 and F-18, the American Su-27 and MiG-29, various older models, and occasional breakout designs like the Saab Gripen or the Eurofighter Typhoon, and these aircraft have dominated the air defense profiles of most of the world's nations. The production and export of fighter aircraft has been directly tied to global attempts at hegemony, demonstrations of regional alliances, and as a means for the world's most powerful nations to ensure that they keep their military edge. But as we enter an era of more advanced fighter aircraft, where not just fifth generation but sixth generation technology is very much within reach, we can also see the international order shift toward a larger number of homegrown designs and collaborative programs that don't include the US, Russia, or China. Those hegemons' own choices have no doubt played a contributing role. For example, the US's refusal to export the F-22, which was revolutionary for its time, is a good indicator that it also might not export the first sixth-generation fighter it produces. Or in Russia, where the frankly inadequate design and production of the Su-57 has led to a lack of export contracts, every nation that was banking on filling its arsenal with those planes now has to consider other options. And go back to the US. The suspension of sales of the F-35 aircraft to Turkey and the UAE are a potent reminder that even though the US, Russia, or China may be allies in name, these smaller regional powers cannot fully rely on them not to withhold military technology as it suits them. This range of realizations and new developments have led to each country that we've discussed today starting their own attempts to level the playing field with the technology that they build themselves and production that they control. From staunch U.S. allies in South Korea and the three nations involved in the sixth-generation GCAP program to a NATO member in Turkey to an emerging superpower in India, more and more nations are beginning to take their own protection into their own hands. It's difficult to nail down exactly what that will mean for the international order, but as a rule, proliferation of new technologies and weapon systems generally has two primary effects. Yes, they serve as a deterrent to hostile confrontation between two nations that both have that weapon systems, much like mutually assured destruction. But at the same time, the proliferation of these advanced weapon systems into more and more arsenals means that now there are more individual people with the ability to decide to use them. In the case of fifth and sixth generation fighter aircraft, that means more nations able to participate in hyper-advanced aerial warfare where factors like laser munitions or drone swarms are quickly moving from science fiction to science fact. How exactly that plays out, only time will tell. But no matter the exact answer, we all appear to be headed toward a very different future.